So I went that whole way to talk about smiling. I actually get the daily bread on my phone every day. I actually get an email. And on May 20th, so almost exactly a month or so ago, it was a Wednesday. I was getting dressed, sitting on the side of the bed. I probably had my smiley cup, coffee cup. And I was reading the daily bread, and it was called The Smiling Jesus. And I thought, nah, that's kind of cool. And it was about a story of a guy who in 1993 was in a movie called Matthew, and he played Jesus. And he was consumed with how can he best portray Jesus. So he said he got on his knees and begged Jesus for Jesus. And he went through scripture. And I'm going to share one of the scriptures he came across. And... So he portrayed him a certain way, and he became known as a smiling Jesus. He just had this incredible smile that was kind of captivating and seemed like a deep smile. And there was a reason, there was one verse that he kind of focused on a lot, and I'm going to share that in a minute. But I'm going to share with you three things, and if you want the sermon in a sentence so you can fall asleep or Facebook times you out, you can say, I heard the whole sermon. The only thing you need to know today is that, it, 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 is that Jesus smiles at you daily. There's a reason for that. And that should make you smile back at him. And that's kind of where I'm going. I'm thinking, what did Jesus do at one point in history? What is he doing now that I know every time he does it, he's smiling at us with a great, sincere, deep smile. That's not just he's happy. That's got other meanings, other emotions. And that we can at the same thing smile back saying, this is the greatest day of my life. I could have talked about many things. The first thing I'm going to share with you, number one, is that you can smile because Jesus loves you. Very simple statement. We learn as a kid that Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. I could use many verses. I'm going to use John 15, 11. It says, as, my, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you, keep, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. That's obviously the difference. That's obviously where the smile comes from, from Jesus. That's where our smile needs to come from. It can't be I smile when I'm happy, when everything's going great. That's when it's that uncontrollable smile. You know what? I, yeah, things are great, man. I have, no, I have no problems. That's the happy smile. It's when things aren't great. That if we have that deeper, if we have that joy, and I'm going to talk about that joy, where we can say, you know what? Things aren't great. Things aren't going the way I want them. Things haven't worked out that I planned, that I was in control of, and somehow I lost control. But I can still think of a God who loves me, of a son of God who died on the cross, who's smiling at me right now, and I can smile and say, you know what, it's going to be okay. And smiling on the outside starts with something on the inside. It's, it's obviously a frame of mind. It's a heart condition that we have to work with. Um, it's something we have to do every day. If you remember back in the 80s, there was a great, great song that I talked about last night, and then it was in my head all night long. I woke up several times with this little four words going through my brain, and I'm like, ah. So I hope there were other people that were here last night who had the same issue, and I kind of feel like good for them. So this song had no music in it at all. I think it made number one on the charts. It didn't have one kind of, any kind of instrument. It had one guy's voice who can make every sound out there. And it had four words, and it said, don't worry, be happy. And it starts out, here's, 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 here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Well, that whole thing with Jesus smiling is not in the Bible. Well, don't worry, be happy is also not in the Bible. But I came across scripture, and I'm like, you know what? This is almost like don't worry, be happy. It's the same kind of concept. Two words, two more words. In 1 Thessalonians 5.16, it says, in, in verse 16, it says, rejoice always. So if you're rejoicing always, if you're finding the joy, that's where rejoice comes from, in life, in what Jesus has done for you, you're not going to be able to worry too well. You're going to have that joy. Next verse, two words, pray continually. So that's almost taking that little feel-good thing from the world. You can look in God's word and say, I've got a better way. I'm going to rejoice always. I'm going to pray continually. It goes on to say, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So that's what God's plan is for us. That's how we can take that. How do, you, how do you smile? How does God smile at us when he sees what condition we're in, when he sees how upset we are? It's real simple. He has a deep love for us that's steadfast, that doesn't change, that's not, on base, that's not based on what we do 
It's not based on how things are going for us. It's not based on how others are treating us. It's that relationship we have with him only. That's what causes his smile, and that's how we can smile in return. I think of if you have your spouse or your grandkids or a sibling or a parent that you love dearly. Back in the day when we were kids, we would have that game where we're going to stare and see who blinks first, right? Well, I've tried it with my wife this week. I've tried it with my grandkid. When you get face-to-face with somebody you love dearly, try not to smile. See if they can try not to smile. That's the game out You know what? I'm not going to smile first. And I always smile first because of my love for my wife or my granddaughter. Maybe things aren't perfect between she could be driving me crazy, the granddaughter, not the wife. But I'm still going to smile at her, right? Because that love is deep. She's watching, so I had to say that. Um, and she's probably thinking, well, stupid is, stupid doesn't. Actually, actually, she already commented that she does not think that. <laughs> So she's awesome. So she's lying in church. Okay. But anyway, um, so, so what can we take away from this? I'm going to stop now. What can we take away? This is, you can tell I hang out with Eric some. So, so the thing we can take away is we can say, Lord, let me smile daily knowing that you love me. And let me talk to you and thank you for all you do. Once again, it's that heart condition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be thankful in everything. No matter how good or bad it is, I'm going to be thankful. No matter how happy I, is, ha- happy I am, that, that smile doesn't come from a place of happiness. It comes from a place of joy. And even for Jesus, all the work that he had to do, somebody who was known as the man of sorrows, he knew that he had that joy. He knew that he could have that joy no matter what he was dealing with. So the second thing that should make you smile, and this is going to sound weird, that makes Jesus smile is that he can look at you and say, I paid it all. It's done. I did it all. You can do nothing. You don't need to do anything. You just need to believe. We know that his death was horrible. We know that he didn't want to. He said, if this cup can be taken from me. Not that he didn't want to, but he wanted to make sure this was God's plan, and it certainly was. So how did he feel about going with that? But before I tell you how he felt, that whole paying it all thing is something we kind of deal with where we try to earn God's favor. We try to do so many things. I'm going to read so many chapters. I'm going to call so many people. I'm going to smile at people even though I'm smirking at them. They don't know. They think I really like them. Hey, how are you? You know, it's a big thing for me to try to stay square with people and to pay for people. Anytime I go out to dinner with anybody, my first thought is I got to get the tab. I got to get the bill. I got to pay for this. I don't want to feel indebted to them. No matter who it is, it's one of my hangups. Been that way for years and years. I've been on the other end where people pay, and it seemed like when I was younger, it was like, awesome. I got bills to pay. I'm trying to do this or that. I can't afford. They invited me out. I didn't want to go anyway, but I went, so I don't have to pay good for me. And of course, when parents did it, that was awesome. I always felt like, well, you guys are old and got money. You can pay for mine. <laughs> and then I got old, and people thought I had money, so then I had to start paying. But I was in Kelsey's about a year or so ago with the wife eating, the one in Port St. John. We got about 20 minutes left of our meal. Here comes a woman who may be watching today. She was part, she is part of our Bible study group. And she came by with three or four women after work. We saw her walk by. We said, hey, how are you? And she went and sat down. We finished up. We got our takeout boxes. And the girl comes by and says, somebody paid for your meal. And I was like, what? Somebody paid for my meal? And me and Sheila looked at each other, and I'm like, what? what? Who did this? And then it dawned on me. And I turned and looked, and she had her back to me, and I couldn't see her. And I'm like, oh, God. It just ruined it for me for a couple of minutes. I was like, this is crazy. I don't want her. I, I, oh, man. this not bad. And I calmed down and said, get over it. That whole thing about stealing somebody's joy, well, she didn't even know, but I was stealing her joy back without her even knowing it. And I've had people in my life at Publix who have done things for me that was overly nice that I felt was not needed, and so on and so forth. And I have been such a weirdo. I shared this last night, and I, I'm almost thinking I shouldn't share it because I think I've done it with one person here maybe. But I used to get a card and a gift card, a Publix gift card right there at the store or wherever, and put it in a card, and I would write to whomever from Stephen Even. And I would put it somewhere where they would get it. And, of course, they would walk around and go, does anybody know Stephen Even? I'm like, Stephen Even? Even, even Stephen? No, I don't, Stephen Even? No, I don't know anybody. And that was my way of trying to square up with them, trying to pay back what they paid for me. And there were times, six months later, I would talk to somebody about, hey, somebody's in here looking for you named Stephen Even. And they're like, and they would figure out, you're the one who gave me that card. So I actually got my joy out of it by, by, by being able to tell them. But Jesus doesn't want that from us. I'm going to share with you Hebrews where we talk about this joy that Jesus had. In Hebrews 12, I'm going to to have have, have the end of the first verse. 
just to show you what we're talking about here, he says, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So as we're living our lives, as we're doing what God wants us to do, what should we be focused on? What should we be thinking about? How should we be face to face and see that smile he has for us? It says in verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So the Alpha and Omega, the one where everything begins. When he came to earth, everything changed. All the stuff the prophets had talked about was finally coming true. All the old covenant, all the law was gone. This is the pioneer of our faith and the perfecter. As he died and, 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 as he died and was resurrected and then ascended to heaven, the faith part was complete of what he did for us. And why did he do it? It said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he knew what he was going through was not going to be a happy thing, was not going to be a, a thing where he could say, this is the greatest day of my life. But this was exactly what he was sent here for. It was the greatest day of our life. And he did it because of that joy set before him. I know how the story ends. I know where I end up, at the right hand throne of God. Ready and waiting for you to come. So that joy went deeper than just a happiness. And I thought this week about, you know, the difference between happiness and joy. I actually sat with Pastor Eric a couple weeks ago. And we were looking at things about joy and happiness. And this one thing I read said, happiness is the opposite of joy. And I thought, the opposite? But happiness is based on conditions. Happiness is superficial. It goes away really quick. I thought this week about oil and ointments and stuff. And I thought about dry skin. I've got issues... And so, 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 so does my wife, and she'll put cream and oil on. And I'm thinking, you know, we don't take water and pour on a dry spot on our arm or our legs, whatever, and now it's healed because we hydrated it with water. It doesn't last. Sometimes before I, I, I go, go, sometimes before I go for a long run, I'll go in the backyard and dunk my head in the pool so my head's cool and my hair's wet. But within 20, 30 minutes, that's gone. The sun's dried it out. I'm as hot as I ever was. But oil gets deeper. Ointment gets deeper. That oil of joy gets deeper. And that oil of joy is talked about in Hebrews chapter 1, where the author of Hebrews is talking to the people in the Hebrew church and the Hebrews, and he was telling them, they, they had groups of Jews that thought that the angels and Jesus were kind of the same. They're on the same level. And he wanted to make it clear that the Messiah was different. He was not just an angel of God. And he says in verse 1, you have loved righteousness, and he, here he, he is speaking of Jesus. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions, set you above the angels, by anointing you with that oil of joy. That needs to be our prayer. How can I just not be happy? Happiness is fleeting. Happiness is emotion. We've heard our pastor talk about it. we can't trust our emotions. I'm having a great day. Man, I couldn't be any better. Enjoy it. It probably won't last. But that oil of joy goes deeper. It will last. And that oil of joy was talked about in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah. And this is not in your notes, but in the book of Isaiah, in verse 61, he's talking about, obviously, the cities had burned down in Israel that they were having to deal with. And in verse 3, he says, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning, M-O-U-R type of mourning. And that song we just sang, the last song we sang said, up from the ashes, hope will rise. And those are the ashes that we still deal with daily. It's our lives that aren't going the way we want them. It's the things that never worked out. Maybe the relationships, maybe the health, maybe you have a health issue that they say won't get any better. You will live with this the rest of your life, whether it's diabetes or whatever. This is not going to get better. This is something I'm going to have. I'm going to have these ashes around me. But it says here that Jesus can give you the beauty for ashes. He can give you the oil of joy for any kind of mourning. There's some stuff we mourn every day. It may be the loss of family or friends or, or health or youth or whatever that we say, I wish I was whatever. But Jesus can give us that oil. In Psalm 118.24, it says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a verse you probably know. Well, some of you know Ron Norton. Um, he's always here on Saturday nights. He's actually part of our Bible study. He got me doing this men's group thing on Thursday night with a bunch of guys from North Carolina that he knows. It's about 30 minutes or so, 45 minutes. And the first time I was on there, there was nine of us. We're in the Brady Bunch screen on Zoom. And the guy says, I'm going to have you go around and introduce yourself. So I said, I'm Rodney from Coco. Well, this one guy looked kind of familiar. 
And we got around to him, and he said, I'm Jeff. I used to live in a town not too far from Coco called Merritt Island. And I'm like, that guy looks really familiar. And he's in Statesville, North Carolina. So I moved the mouse where I can see his name come up, and it's Jeff Taraglio. I went to school with the Jeff Taraglio. So I'm like, I know that guy. So they went around, everybody talked, and then the guy led some scripture, and he said, do you have any thoughts? And the whole time, I just can't wait. So once he goes around, he, he actually reads some scripture. Who has some thoughts? I wait till one guy clicks in and says something, and then I click in and go, hey, I know you. I actually know you. We went to school together and stuff. And I'm sure everybody's thinking, this guy's nuts. And I'm like, you were number 45. You played football, so on and so forth. And the guy's like, yeah, I'd have to look in the yearbooks. I don't really remember. <laughs> but, but this one guy, and that's... And then when, and, and, and once again, I, 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 I went all that way. But there was this one guy who talked about every day we wake up and say, thank you, Lord, for this day. And he said, I've started doing things a little bit differently. Every morning, I just add one word when I thank God for another day. I say, Lord, thank you for this good day. And that one word has made the difference for me. In anticipation of a good day, I go ahead and thank him now. And that's exactly how we need to work with God. That's how we need to work with Jesus. And that really spoke to me a couple weeks ago. So that's been my new thing. Every morning I'm up, I do my little prayer thing, and I read some and throughout the day. But I tried in the morning to thank him with not knowing what's going to go on. And some stuff I'm dreading that day. But I thank him for a good day. So I want you to know that when Jesus is smiling at you saying, I love you, I've paid the price. I want you to know you can look at him and say, thank you for paying the ultimate price so that I can live the ultimate life. And that's his plan, that we may have that joy that he has in us and that it may be complete. So you can smile because he loves you. He's looking at you and smiling when he says that. You can smile because he said, I paid it all. There is no even Stephen with me. There is no, you can't get me a gift card and say, now we're even. It doesn't work that way. You can't read enough. You can't serve enough. You can't do anything enough. It's a gift that I've given you that we just have to receive. And the third thing he says with a great big smile is he says, I'm never going to leave you. And once again, that morning we deal with for things and situations and all kind of stuff. Certainly that morning we do with, with people that we've loved who aren't here with us. I've had people I've talked to this week who said, man, if so-and-so was here having to deal with this, I'm glad they're not with all this survivor stuff. They'd be freaking out. It would ruin their life, so on and so forth. So we all know people who have left us that we mourn and that we miss. We're never going to have that with Jesus. In chapter 28, the last chapter of the book of Matthew, the last verse of the book of Matthew, the last half of that verse says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As Jesus is ascending into heaven, he's letting them know, I'm still here with you. When we talk about the oil of joy, sometimes that's the same thing as, as, as that is referred to the spirit of God. So as Jesus is ascending to heaven, he's not leaving us. His spirit is coming down, and if you're a believer, that spirit lives in you. But you have to look in the face of Jesus to see that smile. You can't just live your life saying, I guess God loves me, I don't know. We haven't been getting along. He hasn't shown up. I think he's distant. That's not where he is. That's not where he's at. In James 4, 8, this is not in your notes, but it says, We are told that if we draw close to God, he will draw close to us. But we have to do something first. We have, to, we have to do something first ourselves. We have to look into his face. We have to take the time to be with him, to feel his presence. If that oil of joy is something that's deep inside, we need to look deep inside. We hear our pastor a lot say, don't be focused on the world. And that's what we're all focused on way too much. We're focused on that right now. We're thinking about what we're going to do this afternoon. We're thinking about no church for the next month. We're thinking we're going to be distant from each other. We're going to be distant from God. And none of that is true. With the technology we have, with the, the phones, and certainly with the, with, the, with, 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 with the Facebook Live service, we can come and see each other in cars. We are just as near as we've ever been in a different way. So that's God's plan for us. So if Jesus is never going to leave us, why is he still around? Why is he still here for us? It's very simple. Once again, in the book of Hebrews, in chapter 13, it says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. That same, that's that same thing. We're going to give him thanks daily. And it says the fruit of the lips. And when I read that verse, that's what sold me on this verse. I'm like, you know what? When I think of the lips, I think of smiling. It says with the fruit of the lips that openly profess his name. You're going to have a hard time saying Jesus loves me without smiling. You're going to have a hard time telling others that Jesus loves them without smiling. 
Just like you're going to have a hard time telling somebody you love dearly, I love you without smiling. And it goes on to say, and do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So Jesus is still here. He's still smiling at you. He still has a reason for that. He's still working for you. And when I, when I think of that, I, I, I came to the first verse I ever memorized. I think I've shared this one before. I was 16 or 17. I knew Romans 3.23 and 6.23. It was up on the walls of this church I went to. I knew John 3.16, but I never really kind of actively tried to remember a verse. These are ones I'd sat and read forever. They were, they were just in my brain. But I came across 1 Timothy 2.5. And I was struggling in the beginning. I would every now and then tell somebody at school or wherever, I actually got saved. I was 17 years old. I got saved. What does that mean? And I'm like, well, it kind of means, you know, and I didn't know how to really share my thoughts and share my testimony. But 1 Timothy 2, 5 became my little way where I can say, well, you know, it says in the Bible, for there is one God. Because I had friends who had different beliefs about things. And I was like, yeah, I've never gone and confessed anything. I don't understand how that works or so on and so forth. Um, but I was able to share this verse, 1 Timothy 2, 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And that was my way to self tell them what Jesus had done for me. Way back then, I didn't quite get that he was smiling at me daily. I didn't probably understand that he would never leave me. Even at this age in life, I still don't fully get, and I don't think any of us do at times, how he paid it all. We still want to do our part. We can't do our part. We need to receive everything he gives us. We need to receive that eye-to-eye -eye look where he says, I love you. I'm never going to leave you. I've paid it all. And you know, when I think of all that Jesus has done, I think of that smiling thing. I thought this week, and I, I type this a lot. I, I, I actually don't do any emojis because I'm lazy. <clears throat> When, when, when I have to hit the extra screen, you have to hit the extra keyboard and so on and so forth. So I, back in the day, learned the semicolon, the dash, and the in parentheses, so the sideways. So that's what I sent because so many times when I first started texting, the response I got was, I didn't mean to make you mad or, okay, why are you mad? And I'm like, I'm not mad. But apparently the way I was responding in text, they're like, I think Rodney was whatever. So I used to put that smiley face to say, hey, please do this and make sure it's done. And then I'd put the smiley face so they would know I wasn't mad. But I don't do that smiley face. But what I do type a lot that I almost feel guilty about sometimes and what I say sometimes that I almost feel guilty and I know I shouldn't. But somebody will tell me something great that happened and I'm happy for them. I have joy for them. So I say, God is good. And then sometimes they say all the time. And I think to myself, why do I only say that when they share good news? Well, of course, we can't be callous and cold and they say, hey, I got this diagnosis. And I say, well, God is good. That wouldn't go over very well, right? But guess what? When, when we get bad news, when things are horrible, God is good. Jesus is still looking at us with that great, captivating smile, that hypnotizing smile going, it's okay. Just like Pastor Eric said, you think this is a problem that you can't handle? Well, you're right. But do you know who you're with? Do you know who's looking you face eye to eye right now? Who has the hearts in his eyes? Who says, man, I, this is nothing. This is nothing. I got this. I knew about this long before. It's like that time joke. I knew this long before. Of course we're going to be here dealing with this. And I know where you're going to be in three days when you finally get that joke. I know. I know. <laughs> It took me like two minutes. It wasn't three days. In two minutes, I was like, and when Dave said, I'm like, oh, now I get it. Okay. So I'm going to leave you with that, that Jesus loves you, that there is a smiling Jesus. I actually didn't share in the beginning, but when I saw that he was a smiling Jesus, the whole thing I started this sermon with was, well, where does it say that Jesus smiled in the Bible? And it doesn't. It doesn't mean he didn't smile. It also doesn't say he didn't pull on his beard or scratch his head. I'm thinking he did all that kind of stuff. That he folded his arms and looked at somebody and so on and so forth. But Jesus smiles at you daily and it's for one reason. He did everything for you. He paid it all for you. He doesn't want you to worry about being happy and being comfortable and making sure everything's right. He wants you to worry about being with him. And, and trust me, if you're with him, if you're face to face with him, everything's going to be all right. You're going to have that joy that's deep, and whether things are good or bad, you don't need to be happy. You just need to be smiling and have that oil of joy. So you can ask for God to drench you in that oil of joy and let it stay inside you. Let it go down deep into your skin, into your heart, and it'll change who you are from the inside out. 
I'm going to have the praise team come back up. I got to tell you, Pastor Eric, last night about 1030, I'm in the kitchen. I'm eating a cold pizza pizza. And I realized I had the praise team come up. I never even mentioned the offering or the giving. And he's told me plenty of times. I'll see him on Sunday morning. He goes, last night I was thinking about this in the sermon. I didn't say this. I didn't say that. So it's obviously a real thing. But we encourage you to go online and give. We've got all kind of ways. You can text. You can go on the church website. You can do all kind of things. We struggled today to get the thing working back there. You could do it in person. You can't do that in July, but you can still do it all those ways. You can send Eric a text. He'll, he'll help you do it. I'm going, to open, I'm, I'm going to close this in prayer, and we're going to have Dave and the team go next. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the deep love you have for us. I thank you that God gave you that oil of joy. He anointed you that way. And I know we can be anointed in the same way with that oil of joy, that oil of gladness that is not dependent on circumstances, that is not dependent on our own willpower, that is not dependent on we're going to make this happen. We're going to act a certain way. We know there are many times in life where we kind of grin and bear it. And you don't want us to do that. You want us to give it all to you. We want, you, you want us to put our entire life, the good, the bad, all of it, at your feet and say, I submit to you. My life is only because of what you did. My eternal life is certainly only because of what you did. I pray if there's someone here today who doesn't know what their eternal life is going to be like, that they'll get with myself or Pastor Eric and say, I want to know how I can feel Jesus smiling at me. I want to know that when I smile back that he knows how much I love him, how much I care, how much I want to serve him. Not that I can get even, not that I can pay him back, but that I can show him he's real in me. I can show others that he's real in me. So we thank you for a smiling Jesus. We thank you for a loving Jesus. We thank you for this church where we can see Jesus in each other. And I pray that we'll continue to do that whether we're together or whether we're apart for a while, that we'll know in each of, each of our hearts, there's a smile, there's a deep-seated love that can never be changed or never be taken away. And that's the kind of love you have for us. We give you all the glory and all the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.